If I haven't made it apparent yet, I love flags. And on occasion, I remain indifferent to Canada. So I decided it's time to take a look at the flags of Canada for the provinces, territory, and whatnot. For those non-Canadians who don't know, which is basically everyone except Steve, Canada consists of 10 provinces, along with three territories. The provinces are different than territories, as they are governed by the rules set by the Constitution Act, while the territories gain power from the federal government itself. So iconic of this magical nation is the Canadian flag, a staple that we can't really imagine life without. But the creation of this maple banner was a controversial subject in the 60s. Altering the flag from its Union Jack and Red Ensign roots to a new design entirely was partially influenced by a desire to keep Quebec within Canada. Vertical stripes of red, white, followed by red were originally used in the Royal Military Flag. However, this flag was recommended by Canadian Prime Minister Lester Pearson. The blue stripes represent Canada's surrounding oceans, while the staple maple leaves sit in the middle. Ontario's flag has the Union Jack in the top left corner, which is, of course, referencing how Canada is still a part of the Commonwealth. To the left is the shield of Ontario's coat of arms. This shield consists of the Cross of St. George, and just below that a green backdrop with three golden maple leaves. The red ensign of the flag that functions as the backdrop to the Union Jack is commonplace in many areas of British rule. It consists of a red or blue ensign, the Union Jack, and the coat of arms of the area. Quebec is like Phoebe from that Magic School Bus show, how she never shuts the hell up about her old school. Quebec is basically this, and that old school is France. This is very reflective in their flag. It has a white cross surrounded in blue, reminiscent of the King's Regiment flag of France's past. The white symbol within the blue rectangles are the fleur de lis, a commonly used symbol of French culture and rule. The blue symbolizes heaven. New Brunswick. This is one of the three provinces that belong to an area known as the Maritimes, the others being Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. The flag is basically an expansion of the shield from the coat of arms. The top of the shield is a lion, a common theme of heraldry amongst the English. The gold of the lion and red backdrop is a reference to the significant German influence. The ship along the water represents the shipbuilding economy of the area. The second maritime province, Nova Scotia, has a saltar, that's a diagonal cross, in the same colors, although inverted, of Scotland, of which the province is a former colony of. Atop this is the shield from the royal coat of Scotland. The lion is raised in the iconic rampant position. The final maritime province is Prince Edward Island, which is the only island province in the nation. Again, a lion sits atop the flag and in the same heraldic pose as New Brunswick. The three small trees represent the three counties of the island, kings, prince, and queens, and the large tree represents Great Britain. Newfoundland and Labrador are, in fact, one province. Newfoundland is an island in the Atlantic Ocean, and Labrador is the mainland portion of the province. Its flag is quite an oddity in the grand scheme of flags. The background is white, which represents the cold weather of the province. The two triangles to the right represent the struggle of the mainlanders and the islanders, and according to the artist of the flag, the golden arrow represents a bright future. The triangles and arrows form a trident, symbolizing the strong fishing economy. The blue triangles represent the ocean, along with their British heritage. Manitoba. Manitoba's flag follows a more traditional path. The Union Jack sits in the right corner, followed by a red background forming the red ensign. The shield consists of the cross of St. George on the top, representing the British heritage, and a bison on the bottom. Bison were once commonplace in the territory. Saskatchewan is located in the center of Canada. Its flag is colored by two halves, one green to represent the forest of the north, and the gold to represent the wheat fields of the south. The western red lily, or prairie lily, sits on the flag, a common flower in North America. A significantly less detailed shield from the province's coat of arms sits here, complete with traditional lion and peasant pose. The lion is golden, which differs from other lions seen today, the background is red, and as is tradition, its tongue is blue. The neighbor to Saskatchewan is Alberta. Its flag consists of a blue background, referred to as Alberta Blue, and a slightly altered version of the shield from its coat of arms. The shield has St. George's Cross, of course, and the Rocky Mountains, prairies, and wheat fields. Next, we have the western coastal province of British Columbia. The flag is an extension of the shield from coat of arms, featuring the exact same layout and features, albeit in a rectangular shape. The top consists of a Union Jack and crown to represent the obvious British heritage, along with a sun that sets into the Pacific Ocean. Next, we move into Canada's territories. 
The biggest difference here is territories gain powers from the federal government itself rather than the Canadian Constitution. First off, we have Yukon, which has a tricolor of green, white, and blue, respectively. The green represents the forests, white for snow, and blue for lakes. Atop this is the shield from the coat of arms of Yukon, along with fireweed, or great willow herb, below it. The plant is often used by Native Americans for nutrients and medicinal purposes. The shield itself has St. George's cross on top, defaced by a pattern representing fur. This is due to the natural wildlife of Yukon. Below this, two mountains stand with golden discs inside of them, representing the gold resources of the area. Two rivers flow through the middle, and the noble Alaskan Malamute stands atop the shield. The next territory is the Northwest Territories. The original flag was a red ensign containing the Union Jack, with the letters HBC, for Hudson Bay Company. Today, the flag has two blue stripes and a white stripe in the middle. It's not a tricolor, but instead features a Canadian pale, as half of the width of the flag is a white stripe. This is also featured on the national flag. The blue represents water and the white represents the snow. In the middle is the shield of the coat of arms. The top of the shield represents the Arctic ice and the blue crack represents the Northwest Passage waterways. The red represents the Arctic while the green represents forests. Gold bars represent the resources of the area and the fox represents the wildlife. Sadly, the two narwhals that top the coat of arms were not included in the flag. Poor, lonely narwhals. Finally, we have Nunavut, the largest province in Canada. Also, it's the least populated, and the newest, formed in 1999. The flag doesn't contain a coat of arms at all, but the color scheme seems to be implied by nature, in which the blue and yellow represent the national resources, likely gold, water, and the sky. The two stripes are split directly in the middle, very much different than many other Canadian flags. The object in the middle is a monument of stone, used traditionally as a landmarker. The color red is symbolic of Canada itself. The star to the right is the North Star, Polaris, which is nearly directly in line with the North Pole. So, that's it. Flags of Canada. It's interesting to see Union Jacks and British Herald symbols along with natural icons and wildlife on flags, a contrast that truly makes Canada's flags some of the most interesting on the continent. This is Cody of Geography Hub.